Welcome to this video presentation on discrete signals. The purpose of the presentation is really to introduce you to discrete signals and it's hoped that after the presentation you'll be able to do the following. First of all, recognize that a discrete signal is quite simply just a sequence of numbers. Secondly, that you're able to describe some of the mathematical notation used to represent a discrete signal. And finally, to outline what is meant by the term sampling period, which is also referred to as sampling interval. Okay, so to um, really get a handle on all these things, we're going to start off with looking at a, 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 a more general signal. So a, a signal is basically a time varying quantity, for the want of a better description. And we'll use an example to explain what I mean. So let's think of maybe the temperature outside as it varies over time. T. So we're looking at temperature in degrees Celsius as it varies over time t. Um, we could imagine that the temperature early on in the day is, is, is low and it will gradually rise until it gets to about midday or 12 o'clock and then starts to decay or reduce over the period of the, the rest of the day. Um, so let's just put in a few values here. Let's imagine that's 20 degrees Celsius and that's zero. So that'll be 10 roughly. And we'll just we'll start in the middle. We'll assume that's 12 o'clock and we'll go back in one hour periods. Okay. So that'll be 11, 10, 9, 8, and 7. And we'll go on uh, 1 and 2. 2 p.m. Okay. So this is uh, the time, um, the time of the day. So p.m., 12 noon, and these are all a.m.s, of course. Okay. So that captures the temperature outside uh, uh, as the day progressed. Um, another example signal, just to illustrate the point. Um, another example signal might be the oscillation. Or movement of a pendulum. So if you can think of the movement of a pendulum, uh, so we'll think about the displacement maybe of a small pendulum in centimeters over time. Um, let's think about how a pendulum might move. So it oscillates back and forth. So if we were to capture that as a signal, our pendulum movement might look something like this. It oscillates over time. So I need to show time again on that axis. Okay, so there's two example signals. Uh, one, the movement of the pendulum and the other, the, the variation of the outside temperature over time. Let's just undo that bottom one and we'll focus in on the top one. Because what we want to understand after this presentation is what a discrete signal is. Now a discrete signal is basically a representation of this yellow line, which is uh, uh, really a plot of uh, our, our temperature signal. Okay, so this is a plot of our temperature signal. And a discrete signal is another representation of this. And basically the discrete signal is measurements of this yellow line at different points in time. So we're gonna measure it at what is referred to as discrete points in time. So we're measuring this at discrete points in time. And each point in time that I'm measured, measuring is separated by one hour. Okay, so each one of those pink dots is, is a measurement of the yellow line, which is, I'm gonna just put this in, that yellow line is a continuous signal. So that's just a term that we use to describe this yellow line, this type of signal. Well, over time this will become a little bit clearer what's the difference between continuous and discrete. Now let's think about what, how we could further represent each one of the, these pink dots. We could just measure the value of each of these pink dots, the amplitude value of each of these pink dots. So let's just measure each one of these. This first value might be a value of say 8, second one looks close enough to 8 as well, next one looks about 8.5, then we have 10, then looking at this one here uh, it looks like it's about um, 13, the top one looks like it's maybe about 15, next one is slightly below so 12, 
Um, this one here, we'll say it looks like it's 8 again. Okay. So these numbers here, this sequence of numbers here, is a representation of this yellow line here. Okay. And this here is our discrete signal. And it's a representation of this other signal up here, the, the yellow line signal. And this is one of the key points about discrete signals, that it is quite simply a sequence of numbers. Now we refer to this sequence of numbers mathematically as being x of n. So this collection of numbers here would be referred to mathematically as x of n. I can also refer to each number individually as this first number would be referred to as x0, so it's by convention they say the first number is x0. Okay. Um, also the second number would be referred to as x1 individually. This third one x2 and so on. Um, so it's important that you get used to the mathematical notation because a lot of signal processing relies on some mathematical techniques and if you don't have the notation those techniques become difficult to follow. Um, now, the other piece of information that would be associated with any discrete signal is something called the sampling rate or the sampling interval. So the sampling interval or period. And this sampling interval is the distance or duration between each sample or each measurement. So I've taken a number of measurements from my continuous signal and the sampling interval is the distance between each one. And that's, that is a constant for discrete signals that you'll be dealing with. So in this case the sampling interval was one hour. Okay. Um, and the sampling rate would be one over. So we'll just write this here. Sampling rate is another term. Sampling rate is equal to one over the sampling interval. and also this sampling interval will be referred to as sampling period. Okay, so this is the key point. The discrete signal is a sequence of numbers. The duration between each, uh, between each sample as it's referred to, so each one of these numbers is referred to as a sample of the continuous signal. Uh, each one of those samples is uh, separated by a duration referred to as the sampling interval. Okay, so maybe let's take another look at this from a different perspective. So we'll clear that. And let's think about the case where we have a sequence of numbers. So let's imagine, I'm just going to draw them vertically this time, so it doesn't really matter. But I, 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 I'd write each uh, sequence of numbers either verti vertically or horizontally. So this is a sequence of numbers x of n, which is given by 0 0.5, 9, 2.5, 7.3, 4, and 6. Now, of course, the numbers mean very little like that, so we generally will plot those sequence of numbers. And that's the, the range of numbers seems to go between 0 and uh, say 10, make it easy. So that'll be 5. And how many numbers? We have 6, so that'll be 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'll have to add a little bit on, 6, okay, so that's our signal, or the, well, these are the axes um, that I'll use to plot my signal, and let's label these. Now, in this case, my horizontal axis is n, or sample number, because each one of these numbers here is a sample of the discrete signal x of n. So that's x0. The next value is x1, x2. So they are the individual representations of each of those numerical values. And we would label this axis as being amplitude. So we have amplitude versus sample number. And let's quickly just plot those values. Uh, so the first value is 0 0.5. Um, 9, 2.5, 7.3, uh, 4, and 6. Okay, oh actually, yeah, that's fine. 
Um, so I have six numbers, but I go from zero to five. Okay. Now, just looking at those sequence of numbers like that, it can be difficult to interpret. So normally, when we're we're visualizing a discrete signal, we would show the the dots join together or interpolate it. So I'm just going to interpolate those dots as best I can. Okay. So normally, when it, the discrete signal would really just be each yellow dot on its own, but when we're trying to visualize it, it makes sense that we actually join the dots just to make it easier to visualize. Uh, okay, now, in order to interpret this data, we need a couple of pieces of information. First of all, we need to know, well, what's the sampling period? Because normally our signal changes over time, and we need to know, well, what this, this signal is obviously oscillating or in some way. Um, but how quickly is it oscillating? So let's imagine that I was told the sampling period is two seconds. Okay. Well now this signal is starting to make a little bit more sense. You can sort of picture that some quantity is varying over, um, uh, well let's see, how long is it? It's going to be a 10 second period. Now let's imagine that we were told, well actually these amplitude values re refer to displacement of an object. So. I'm going to use the example of a bungee jumper. Okay, so we can see, for example, that the bungee jumper, this might be a starting position or close to it, so he's starting very close to a certain position, and now he's moving away from the um, from the starting position, and then he's bouncing up and down on his bungee jump. Okay, so the key point is that in order to interpret a sequence of numbers, or a dis discrete signal, you will need to know two pieces of information. First of all, you need to know the sampling period, which I've labelled here as T, so that's a common thing to do. Uh, the second thing is you'll need to know what the the amplitudes of the sequence of numbers represent in order to interpret the data. Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully you got the, the major points, and um, I'll see you in the next presentation.